everyone. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I am DeSoto Brown. I am the host of this show. This is an episode of Human Humane Architecture's Dokomomo Hawaii part. And every so often we shift from looking at an everyday up-to-date architecture, and instead we look back historically at architecture, particularly from the mid-century period of the 20th century. And that's what Dokomomo does. Dokomomo is an international organization that studies and preserves mid-century architecture. And I work at Bishop Museum here in Honolulu. I am the Bishop Museum historian, and I'm also the curator for the archives department. And what you're gonna be seeing today is mostly photographs that I've taken, but with a few images that also come from Bishop Museum archives. So today we are looking back at the 20th century in Hawaiian architecture at a particular type of thing which was very prevalent during that time period, but which today is no longer being made, it's no longer being put on buildings, and it's never going to be created exactly the way it was back in the 20th century, and I'll explain why as I go through. So as we look at our first slide here, on the left, you see a photograph that's primarily of a 1950s Studebaker car in the foreground, but behind it is a building with some distinctive architectural features. And in the photograph on the right, you'll see those present as well. During this period of, say, the late 1930s into the middle 1950s, even very modest buildings being made here in Honolulu had some features which were handmade and which were unique to each one of these structures, which were not too expensive at the time, and that's why they appeared. So in both of these pictures, you can see that there are detailing in the wood which is being used for not only the um, windows, the screen windows of these two buildings, but also the doors in the picture on the right. This is hand done, handcrafted by local carpenters, and they are geometric patterns that are included. But what we're going to be looking at today, and also in addition, I want to point out that the leaf pattern that you see on the building on the left, which is sort of a branch with leaves coming off of it, Again, that's a unique feature for the different floors of this building. But what I'm going to be looking at today are the railings of these buildings, the metal railings. Every, in both of these situations, you see there are different patterns of these iron bar railings. And again, these were locally fabricated. Let's continue and see what the story is on this. Here are two of the companies which would have made those metal railings. In the picture on the left, which is from the late 1930s, is the Islands Welding Building, which was located in Kaka'ako. And on the left-hand side, the Islands Building is on the right. The left-hand side is an ad from 1953 from the yellow pages of the telephone directory for the Industrial Welding Company. And what's important here is both of these businesses would have done a lot of industrial work, in fact, industrial welding. So they would have done a lot of stuff that wasn't decorative. They would have done a lot of really nuts and bolts stuff like pipes and building structures out of, out of metal. But if you read what is present on the left, you'll see that the industrial welding company did structural steel and ornamental iron, which is one thing I'm talking about, garages, warehouses, cottage railings. Cottage railings is what I'm going to be focusing on, and that's what the term was that was used during this time period, again, from the late 1930s to about the middle 1950s. And here's a picture of what I'm talking about. There are a great many modest two- and three-story walk-up apartment buildings in the city of Honolulu. And during a particular time period, these buildings, which again, were not expensive, had these distinctive iron railings, which were locally fabricated. And again, as I say, here's an example. Now, the railings were there for obviously a very important utilitarian reason. They were there to keep you safe from falling off of the second or third story and also being able to walk downstairs and have a railing to hold on to. But what's important is 
every one of them, as we continue through this, you're going to see that each one of these is a different pattern. This is not some prefabricated thing that came from a factory someplace in the United States. These were all made by hand, and each one is unique. Now, these are easy to see. Every time you drive around, walk around, you'll be able to spot a number of buildings like this, particularly depending upon where you're driving or walking around. But notice, if you will, how every one of the railings is different. It's because every one of them was made specifically just for that building. And again, if you look at this railing, which was located on the Kenrock building, which was a complex of several small structures on Kapilani Boulevard, which is now demolished, look carefully at the stair railing here. And there are two things I want to point out. Obviously, again, this is just there to be utilitarian and keep you safe and have provide you something to hang on to as you're going up and down the stairs. But at the bottom of the stairs, notice how the top part of the railing does not come to an angle, but it curves down towards the ground. And obviously, that's something that the architect must have specified for the building, and then the fabricators made it. But that curve is the same on both sides. I mean, it's not, this, this is not sloppy work. They are exactly the same. And the curve is not only sort of aesthetically attractive, but it also makes the railing easier to grab and hold onto as you're walking up to it from the ground level. And that's a thoughtful thing that's just being provided for the convenience of the people who will be using the stairway. Furthermore, at the top of the stairway, notice that the horizontal bars on the railing don't stop being horizontal at the upright, it's at the top of the stairs, but they continue straight and then angle down. And again, all of those bars, all four bars on both sides have that little extra touch. That's an artistic, creative touch. And again, for something that's purely utilitarian, is interesting. And again, it's not something that's going to be replicated again today, partly because it would be too expensive in most cases for an inexpensive building to even consider. And there's something else about these railings that I think is important. And it's not just the tangible metal railing itself, but it's visually what does it do to you who are looking at the building or are looking through the bars. First of all, it alters your view of what's behind the bars in kind of an interesting way, but even more important, the intangible aesthetic part of this is the shadows that are created when the sun is at a particular angle. And in each of these three pictures, you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I don't believe that the architects or the fabricators or the builders necessarily were even thinking about this, Maybe they were, but probably they weren't. Yet, it is a part of these railings, which is worth pointing out and being aware of. It's an aesthetic addition to the building, the experience of the building. And I think that's pretty exciting and wonderful and uh, unexpected. Now, let's look back historically at some of the precedents for the particular railings that I'm talking about. And here's a building from 1927. This is the main building of the Honolulu Museum of Art, or as it's known today by its abbreviation, HOMA. Now, this harkens back, what you're looking at here, harkens back to the metal work that would have been done in Europe starting centuries ago. And uh, this type of metal work was often wrought iron, meaning that you have iron bars and you turn them, twist them, you heat them, strike them with hammers, in other words, to make them, to mold them uh, to create them into artistic patterns for whatever structure you're making. And something I'm going to just emphasize here is, and I'll, say, I'll continue to show you pictures of this too, every one of these, uh, these structures here, these iron structures here, serve the function of keeping people in or out. That's their main function. They're there for security but they also do it in an aesthetic way that allows full air movement. In other words, these are not solid walls. These are not glass windows. These are not glass doors. 
they serve the same function, but they do it in a visually attractive way. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that the patterns that the metal bars create are fascinating in that our brains like to look at such kind of complicated things and create patterns out of them, create similarities or repeating motifs. So if you look at the picture on the right, that's a picture of the grill work that's over one of the windows here at the entrance to the museum. And look carefully, because there are all these different things that are going on that your brain can start to identify as repeating patterns. So first there are the vertical and horizontal bars, which create blocks, which create rectangles, which create squares actually as well. Then within those, there are circles. And then within all of this, there are diagonals that are going in different degrees, they're going in, in opposite directions. And then when they meet, they form another form, which has sort of indented or concave sides. If you start to look at this, you also will see there are big sort of diamond shapes with rounded corners. That again is a fascinating aspect to these, which are just serving a function, and yet they have an artistic element. At the tops of each of these, uh, if you might say, sort of wrought iron walls, because that's kind of what they are, there are specific other unique motifs. And in the top picture, you will see a monogram that has the letters A in the middle, H, and on the other side, A. Those letters form the original name of this museum, which was the Honolulu Academy of Art. And meaning HAA, they've been reorganized a bit. The two images on the bottom show you a popular motif, a very popular motif in the 1920s and 30s in particularly European and American, but also worldwide commercial art or decorative arts. And that is the sun. And the sun here is very abstracted. It's just a semicircle with other circles within it. And then lines radiating out of it at an angle to indicate sun rays. Well, the sun on the lower right is just a plain sun, but the sun on the lower left has some horizontal clouds that are partly covering it up, which I think is another fascinating type of uh, artistic. It's so abstract that you might not even notice it until it's explained to you. But it's, it's fascinating to me that our brains can see an indication of the sun in clouds in something which is, again, so allegorical and non-realistic. And there they are. OK. Moving forward in time, we're now up to 1936, the previous building being from 1927. And here are some gates which are located at Montague Hall, which is the music building at the Ponovo School. And these, again, serve the same function as the previous ones. These serve as security, but again, they're not solid. You can see through them. The air moves through them. It's a much more livable and appealing way to create that level of security without having to construct a solid wall, and particularly in the Hawaiian environment. We need to be open to our environment, which for the most part is very pleasant and very, very hospitable to be in. These particular forms, I think, are extremely abstracted art deco indications of or uh, representations of plants growing upwards. So it looks like there are stalks going upwards. It looks like there are the indication of leaves going upwards. And at the top, there are these sort of circular forms, which perhaps are meant to indicate flowers. But what I also like are the, up, the shorter upright bars, each of which is topped by a tight spiral. But it's very attractive. This is very typical of the Art Deco period uh, in architecture in the 1920s and 30s, leading into, um, again, abstracted forms. Now, we come to 1941. This is the Mormon Tabernacle, which is a complex of buildings on Baratani Street, 
right at the intersection with Kalakaua Avenue. In the picture on the left, you see like what I've been already describing, gates, combination of concrete and metalwork inserts into the wall. So rather than just a plain solid concrete wall, we have more visual interest here. And again, geometric shapes, typical of this period in the decorative arts. Now we're moving again to a little, about the same time, 1941. This is Farrington High School, which is in Kalihi uh, on King Street. And this is something that, again, I want to emphasize. This type of custom-made metalwork, which, again, this is custom-made, is not something that you would be able to do in a public school building today. The work would be far too expensive to do this. But at the time the school was built, it was possible to commission work like this at a, a price level was a, for a publicly funded building. And here, geometric angular patterns, which were very popular at this, this construction. And notice that these gates, this structure, which is grating over an open window, again, we're in the Hawaiian environment. We do not need to shut the environment out and leave our hallways and our walkways open. Sometimes the rain and the wind, but also provide security and provide space to keep people out or keep people in. And there also are situations where custom work that's uh, more detailed also appears on other buildings and more recently too. The picture on the left is an apartment building that's located on what's called the Gold Coast of Waikiki at the base of Diamond Head. It's a cluster of high-rise buildings, condos, which are expensive. Therefore, it's referred to as the Gold Coast. And this gate um, is part of a structure or a complex, I should say, that has a very strong Japanese motif. Thus, the inclusion of the Japanese kanji in the center in the circle. That is just cut out of sheet metal. So it's not necessarily, it didn't have to be hand worked as much. It's just a flat visual representation of a Japanese word. The building on the right is a private home, which is located not too far from the one on the left. It is incorporating a Japanese kanji. What I don't have in this particular presentation is Chinese kanji, Chinese characters, which were very frequently incorporated into metalwork locally. And those will be very angular. They'll be very stylized, are not necessarily recognizable, but they very often are incorporated very angular and very sharply edged as part of this same technique that we're talking about, that I'm showing you. Now, this is what I really want to talk about. Remember I said cottage railings were being advertised by the industrial welding company? Well, this is what they were talking about. These are so-called cottage railings. So these are private homes. In some cases, they're maybe duplexes. They were for middle-class people. They were not very expensive homes in most cases. And yet, they were able to have these custom railings handmade for them. And they're all different. And notice some of the techniques that were used here that show that these people who were doing this welding, and we don't consider welding to be an artistic endeavor, and yet they made all of these different with different artistic touches. So in, this, in the picture on the left, look at how the railing that's coming down at an angle is a repetition of the one to the right of it that's plainly horizontal. This one is transposed so that it's all angular. And then the upright bar, an upright bar, but it's intentionally made an angle. Somebody came up with that. I think that's cool. In the picture on the right, you can see how, again, and this looks sort of Chinese, there are repetitions of that same upright angular pattern that go down the stairway with the curved top to the railing on the stairway. You can see that I really like these, and a lot of people would look at this and pay no attention. 
But I think if you are attuned to it, you can start to appreciate it. You would think that working with iron bars, you'd probably want to just stick to straight lines because that would be easier to do because you're getting them from the factory as straight iron bars. But in fact, you see that a lot of circles and other forms get incorporated into these radians. It's an artistic touch that I can appreciate. And notice that even though these two examples here each incorporate circular forms, they're not the same because they're all handmade and each one is unique and different. Now, what are the potential problems here? Because again, artistically, I really like the way these look aesthetically, but there are potential problems. One, let me point out, I'm not an architect, I'm not a builder, uh, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what the laws are today for what type of configurations metal railings can have, but I do know that there are safety considerations. And one of them is you cannot allow spaces that are big enough for a child to be able to crawl through and fall out. I suspect a lot of these older railings don't fulfill that requirement. And they've been grandfathered in, but they won't be allowed now because of safety considerations. And two, notice in these two examples how the bars come to a very sharp end. There are loose, empty, I mean, there are bars that are just sticking out. There's no cover over them. That too is a potential safety problem. And again, this may be very rare or almost never that something happens. But for example, somebody's clothes could catch on this, make them fall down. Somebody could fall accidentally against this and get gouged or poked or impaled on them. Again, a child could be climbing on this and be injured, tap seriously. And there's the old joke of be careful or you'll poke your eye out. Well, in this situation, that might happen to a child. And again, it may be extremely rare, but it's something that needs to be kept under consideration. And that is, I'm going to say, why railings like this are never going to be produced again. And it's also because of the safety considerations, but because the expense would be too great that unless you have build your home, you wouldn't be able to afford this. And again, these are modest structures that you're looking at here. The one on the right is just made of plain cement blocks. The one on the left is wood. Today, it's not something that can be done again. Some of these railings, look at these two examples here. Some of them, uh, the one on the left looks like it probably has spaces, but again, today would not be legal that a child could crawl through. If you're a little kid clambering on something and you think that's just something fun to climb, climb up on, it's something that could cause you damage. The example on the right is probably a lot more in tune with what's required today. There's a lot more uh, solid space there that would keep something from falling out or a person from going through there. But I would imagine that those smaller rectangles today might be considered a hazard in terms of sticking your hand in and falling. Again, not common, but this is the type of thing that regulations try to anticipate and prevent. Again, I don't think either of these would be allowed. And I like to look back at them and I like to document them because they're fun. Now, these two forms that you see on this railing here it were especially prevalent in swimming pool. Swimming pools were becoming a lot more popular in that deck. They started to make them in different forms. It's referred to as a kidney shape. I've never seen a human kidney. I don't know what a human kidney actually looks like. I don't ever want to see an actual human kidney, but I take for everybody's word that this is what a kidney looks like. It just kind of grafted onto this otherwise prosaic uh, situation of upright bars. And I think, it's, I think it's playful, I think it's funny, and I like it. And this is something I really, these clearly are pairs of leaves, as you can tell. The construction is very simple. 
they're cut out of sheet metal, each one, and grafted onto the top is a small bar that's so it looks like the stem of the leaf. And we have a lot of tropical leaves, philodendron vines that look like this. And so it's not just a railing that looks distinctive, it has sets of leaves. It could have just been continuing down straight. But the architect said, let's make this a little different. Let's make this a little more aesthetically pleasing and curved it. And then the metal railings curve along with the cement stairs. Now, again, I love the way these look. The space at the bottom and the point of that larger leaf is something that if you were a three-year-old kid and trying to climb through would cause you some damage. Again, we aren't seeing these anymore. But the bottoms of those upright vertical bars, what do you see? You see rust. This is iron stuck into concrete. Iron rebar is included in concrete when poured in place concrete is being poured to provide stability and to make sure that the concrete does not fall apart. But when you're sticking iron into concrete that's exposed to the air and exposed to moisture and rain, as time passes, it can rust. And that becomes extremely dangerous because if the bases of these metal railings fail, someone leaning on them can make them break. That means that when the railings of this building become too rusty to be safe, and the building is still standing and hasn't been demolished for a high rise, that means they're going to have to be replaced. And when these railings are replaced, these are going to be trashed. They're going to go to the landfill. We're never going to see them again. So these are not going to be here forever. They need to be documented while they're still in place. And we need to appreciate them and love them while we still have them. I have been looking at these railings on Date Street since I was a kid. And even though the building is set back from the street, because they are painted in bright colors, I always remember seeing them, even when I was a child. So we're going back 60 more years, and they're still here today. Plants. These are blooming anthurium plants, and the and flower mimics the shape of the leaf, and they're hand-painted. So the flowers are red, and the leaves and the, and the stems are green. This, again, is total artistic creativity. And they're also not going to be here forever. They're going to be replicated. So keep an eye out to look for and appreciate this metalwork, these railings, which are something which deserve appreciation and deserve attention. Thank you very much for joining me. Again, I'm DeSoto Brown, and this has been Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii, particularly focusing uh, or pay tribute to Dokomomo Hawaii, the organization that studies and preserves mid-century architecture of the 20th century. I'll be doing more shows here on Think Tech. I hope to see you with me, and uh, until I next see you, aloha. 